आत्मबुद्धि प्रसाद यग्रे विषम पिना अमृतोपम तत्सुख सात्विक प्रोक्त आत्मबुद्धि प्रसाद तट अग्रे इन द बिगिनिंग विषम विवा लाइक पॉइजन परिणाम एट द एंड अमृता नेक्टर उपमम कंपेर्ड टू तट दट सुखम हैप्पीनेस सात्विकम इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस प्रोक्तम ही सेड आत्मा इन द सेल्फ बुद्धि ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस प्रसाद जम बोर्न ऑफ द सेटिस्फैक्शन ट्रांसलेशन बाय रिवेन गे सीसी भक्त वेदांत संस्कृत पद गोपाल की जय that which in the beginning may be just like a poison but the, at the end is just like a nectar and no chevekens want to self realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness but that which is in the beginning may be just like a poison but at the end is just like a nectar and no chevekens want to self realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness or padvesh popad in the pursuit of self realization one has to follow many rules and regulations to control the mind and the senses and to concentrate the mind on the self all these procedures are very difficult bitter like poison but if one is successful in following the regulations and comes to the transcendental position he begins to drink real nectar and he enjoys life so We'll try to understand. O Magnana, the Miranda's ship, Nana and Jana Salakaya, Chakshurun Meeli, Tam Meena, Tasmai Sri Guru Vino, Mukum Karoti Vacharam, Pangum Mangaite Grim, Matrupa Tam Hamunde, Sri Guru Um Dena Tarn, Paraman and the Madhavan Sri Chaitanya Isro, Vancha Kalpatarup Besya Krupa Sindhu Bhai Vacha, Patita Nam Pavane Bhio Vaishnavi Bhio Namo Noha, Jay Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar. श्रीवासादि गौरव भक्त बंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वापदाक रूप गोस्वाम रूपाद की जय शुभपाद की जय गौरभक्त जय क्विकली अंडरस्टैंड दिस चाप्टर एटीन हई लेवल summary what it covers and we will look at sections we will look at the connection and then we will come to this verse and try to uh, go a little bit deeper so this chapter the first six chapters stress was given to devotion service yogi nama observation at the end of sixth chapter we see 47th verse of all yogis are transcendent list one who always thinks of me within himself is the best and in the next six chapters bhakti yoga your devotion service is stressed and its nature and activities were discussed in the third sixth chapter the last one knowledge renunciation activities of the material nature transcendental nature devotion should be described so finally it was concluded that all acts should be performed in conjunction with the supreme lord represented by the words om tat sat in the 17 which includes vishnu the supreme person so that is what is the third part of bhagavad gita has shown that devotion service om tat sat and nothing else is the ultimate purpose of life so that is the 18th chapter now the connection in the 17th chapter this om tat sat was used so where and in the 12th chapter also 11th verse is used so in the previous chapter by uttering the word tat without seeking results sacrifices austerities and charities are performed by those with desire for liberation from that material world those with a desire for liberation are sanyasis but there seems to be others who are de- detached from all the results of the, their work as mentioned by you when you said sarva karma phala tyagam tatak kure tatmavan giving up all the result of your work with great attention in 12.11 so what is the tyaga of these others wanting to know distinction arjuna asked this question in this verse what is the difference between the uh, tyaga and sanyas renounce order of life and renunciation Mm-hmm. Uh, purpose of renunciation. So that is the question begins with the chapter eighteen. So that is the connection from seventeen the Om Tat Sat verse to all the way to the eighteen chapter connection. Seventeen point twenty five verse is the connection verse. Now let's look at the sections. The first section is uh, 
the summary this 18th chapter is con uh, conclusion of all the whole bhagavad gita so that's the summary um, different lenses um, it is been looked at the 1 to 12 is karma yoga first six chapters are of gita are summarized someone who is not renounced accrues the reactions sanyas is doesn't get arjuna is asking how one can work without getting attached to reactions so that's what and in the next section is 13 to 18 or 17 um, last six chapters of gnana yoga has been summarized basically nishkama karma action and action in action action gnana also karma on the platform of gnana basically a purified knowledge arises in the heart so in the five causes lord sites so that is what is the second section and third section today's verse 37 is in the third section 1940 basically describing three modes of material nature everything uh, the 19 to 40 is uh, subdivided 19 to 20 is once knowledge on the basis of three modes goodness passion ignorance and the same 23 to 26 once action on the basis of three modes of material nature 27 to 28 the performance of action are three types of knower and three modes again and 29 to 32 types of intelligence in three modes and 33 to 35 determination in these three modes and today's verse is 36 to 39 three types of happiness goodness passion ignorance so that is under three modes. so that's why this 19 to 40 three modes of material nature is called sometimes called yoga ladder karma to karma yoga to nishkama karma now so then the next section is 41 to 48 is sakama karma to nishkama karma yoga and then the next section 49 to 55 is going from uh, nishkama karma yoga to brahma nishta then 56 to 66 is going to surrender unto krishna where it begins with where the previous section ended brahma nishta so it has brahma nishta ishwara nishta bhagavan nishta or guhya gnan guhya tara gnan guhya tama confidential more confidential most confidential in that surrender to krishna is sub divided into 56 to 66 or it can be said as 56 to 60 as pure devotion service or 61 to 63 as surrender to super soul 64 to 66 as a becoming a pure devotee of lord krishna you know worshiping personal form of the lord and then the next section is 67 to 71 the preaching and studying gita are the results of studying gita results of preaching gita results of distributing gita all that is described And then 70 to 70 through is how after hearing Arjuna's is formally fixed that has been described. And the last one is Sanjaya's prediction is 74 to 78. And so that's how this chapter has been laid out. Now let's look at uh, this verse. Yatta agre visham eva parinami amurutva pamam tat sukam hathikam prokta hathikam buddhi prasadajam. Mm-hmm. the bearing it is like a poison at the end it is like nectar which awakens one to self realization to set to be happiness in the mode of goodness now so when we everybody wants to be happy always but in this case it is mentioned it is like poison because this is the mode of goodness and above goodness so those who are in the normal material platform no one wants to wake up what, what's happening with these guys who are um, waking up why do they want to spoil their life why do they want to wake up at 3 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning and chant the holy name of the lord why do they have so many restrictions on four regulated principles why do we have to chant 16 rounds and so many things you cannot eat this and that why so that's why it seemingly in the beginning it uh, looks like a poison which is very difficult to do you know, so much so many restrictions but so that is a, but everybody wants happiness mm, uh, they are trying to get that happiness through different means so there's a proper talks about this atyantika dukkha nivrutti the whole struggle is going on to minimize our miseries and to increase our happiness that is our attempt but everyone is working for that so dukkha means unhappiness atyantika means ultimate but people do not understand what is this ultimate happiness is so there is no dukkha there is no unhappy that is ultimate happiness If you study whatever happiness we are trying to establish, there is unhappiness also. It is not unmixed. The economic development, if you look at, just like modern age, if anyone wants to become rich man, he has to first of all attempt accept unhappiness. He works very hard day and night, then he can get some money. Thus, engaging that money for increasing further money, increasing further money, then one day he may be millionaire. So that to become millionaire also not understood happiness. How to keep that money? How to invest it? The anxieties are there. so in, in this material world we are engaged in this business so that's why 
unalloyed happiness is not possible. But if you actually want unalloyed happiness, then you have to be advanced in spiritual consciousness, unalloyed. And so that's why the Prabhupada is talking about this atyantaka dukkha nivurti. Now there are ways in which how we can come to this ultimate happiness. Now we'll take a look at the examples and first we have to understand in order for us to come to the ultimate happiness, there are two things must be first there. First one is Shastriya Sraddha. Shastrardha Avadharana Mahi Sraddha. Faith which is inspired by governing principles of scripture thus brings the engagement in devotion service. If you don't have Shastriya Sraddha the studying the scriptures, how one should study, that we are going to talk about. So, Pope has clearly mentions. And so, we don't, if we have Laukika Sraddha, which means we have all worldly things, political news, this news, that news, what, who said what, but you don't have the Shastriya Sraddha. Then you can't really get ultimate happiness. Because Lord Krishna himself is expanding as Shastra, Sadhu, the pure devotee, spiritual master, and super soul. These three ways, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is Explaining this to Sanatana Goswami and Chaitanya Charitamrita. In three ways, Lord himself is expansion. Apaurushaya. It is coming from the mouth of the Supreme Lord. So that's what one must have, first of all. Shastri avadharanama israddha. Then, Bhagavat lila madhurya lobama israddha. The faith arising on the account of some extreme good fortune which is based on intense longing to hear the sweet past tense of the Lord. Which thus brings about engagement in devotion service. If this is not there, then it's very difficult to get happiness. We might be in devotion practicing seemingly, but we are not really getting taste. Hmm? We haven't developed any taste because of this. So that's why it is very important, as uh, uh, Prabhupada is mentioning. Tasma Sarvatmana Rajan Hari Sarvatra Sarvada Sarvata Vyasa Kitta Vismatta Vyasa Bhagavan Bhunam 2.236 Srimad Bhagavatam Prabhupada is making the comment. Out of all nine different methods, the first one, namely hearing, is the most important function in the process of Bhakti Yuga. Without hearing sufficiently and properly. Sufficiently and properly. And carefully make that point. No one can make any progress by any methods of practice. See the clear one. Without hearing sufficiently and properly, no one can make any progress by any methods of practice. I may say that I am chanting 64 rounds, 128 rounds for me. But if you are not hearing, then you can't progress. Clear statement Prabhupada is making. And for hearing only, all the Vedic literatures are there. Compiled by authorized persons like Vyasde, who is the powerful incarnation of Godhead. And since it has been ascertained that the Lord is the super soul of everything, he should therefore be heard and glorified everywhere and always. That is a special duty of human being. When the human being gives up the process of hearing about the all-pervading personality of Godhead, he becomes victim to hearing rubbish transmitted by man-made machines. Missionary is not bad. Through machine, one can take advantage of hearing about the Lord. But because missionary is used for ulterior purpose, it is creating a rapid degradation in the standard of human, life, human civilization. It is said here that it is incumbent upon human beings to hear because uh, scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam are made for that purpose. So that's how you can clearly directly hear from Sri Prabhupada how important it is to uh, hear. Because this, that is the real problem of life. Now, we can take a look in Srimad Bhagavatam also in many places. Uh, this has been mentioned. Uh, we cannot otherwise naturally require happiness. Adoksha jalambam iha asubhatmana saririna samsriti chakra sahatanam tad brahma nirvana sukham vidur buddha tato bhajadvam pradaye hrud iswaram. 7737. Prahlad Maharaj, what did he learn in the womb? He is talking about Prahlad Maharaj. The real problem of life is the repetition of birth and death, which is like a wheel rolling repeatedly up and down. This wheel, however, completely stops when one is in touch with the Supreme Personality of God. In other words, by the transcendental bliss, I realize it from constant engagement in devotion service. So how will you get happiness? This is the way. Constant engagement. One is completely liberated from material existence. All learned men know this. Therefore, my dear friends, oh son of the Asuras, is teaching the Sandana Mark and students, school friends. 
immediately begin meditating upon and worshiping the super soul within one's heart one acquires in the purport proposal making one acquires natural happiness upon seeing the moon but when one can see the supreme personality of godhead one's transcendental happiness increases hundreds and thousands of times as soon as one is very intimately connected with the supreme personality of godhead one surely become free from all material contamination ya nivrutti stanu brutam the cessation of all material happiness is called nivrutti or nirvana as rupa goswami is mentioning is quoting from bhakti rasamrita sindhu 1138 brahmanando bhave desha chet parardha guni krada naiti bhakti sukam bodo paramanu tulamapi the brahmananda bliss of merging in brahman appalness were multiplied 100 trillion times it would still not equal even an atomic fragment of ocean of transcendental bliss felt in devotion so you can understand what kind of bliss is it this is so the what one will experience when he is in the association of devotees so otherwise this is not possible as dro maharaj is mentioning in his own personal example is clearly making that point bhakti muhu pravahatam tvai me prasango uya dananta mahatam amalasayanam enanjasa ulbanam urvyasanam bhavadim nesye bhavad guna katamrata panamatta dromaras saying o oh, unlimited lord kindly bless me so that i may associate with great devotees who engage in your transcendental loving service constantly as the waves of river constantly flow such transcendental devotees are completely situated in uncontaminated state of life by the process of devotion service i shall surely be able to cross the nissant ocean of material existence which is filled with the waves of blazing fire like dangers it will be very easy for me for i am becoming mad to hear about your transcendental active qualities and past times which are eternal existence on uh, the in the purport proposal dro maharaj is saying that he, devotion service in the association of devotees is the cause of development of further devotion service by devotion service only one is elevated to the transcendental planet golokunda and there also there is only devotion service for the activities of devotion service both in this world and, and in the spiritual world are one and the same devotion service does not change the example of a mango can be given here if one gets an unripe mango it is still a mango when it is ripe it remains the same mango but it has become more tasteful and delicious similarly there is a devotion service performed according to the direction of the spiritual master on the injunctions and regulative principles of shastra see, see that clearly stated if anybody talking about devotee if anybody talking about bhakti then it has to be under the direction of a spiritual master and pure devotee of the law and the injunctions of shastra guru always represents shastra you will not go um, um, without representing shastra so that's it well, it is very important then only that is called bhakti otherwise we are doing our own thoughts and desires what we like that is not bhakti and there is a devotion service in the spiritual world rendered directly in the association with the supreme personality of god but they are both the same there is no change the difference is that one stage is unripe and other other is ripe more relishable it is possible to mature in devotion service only in the association of devotees you can understand the importance of it so this is dro maharaj mentioning in his own example further and how he saw the beautiful form of the lord because that's why i am sharing one must see how much one should be absorbed like dro maharaj savai diya yoga ध्रुवाजेशन जस्ट Prabhupada talking in the purport, important purport. This Shama Sundar form of the Lord, this is Radha Madhava, non-different. Prabhupada always seeing Jai Radha Madhava. How attractive and beautiful. See how the they dress the Lord. This is what when we have love and care, that's how it will be. This Shama Sundar form of the Lord within the heart of a devotee is not imaginary. When a devotee becomes mature in his prosecution of devotion service, he sees face to face the same Shama Sundar. he has thought of during the entire course of his devotion service how many how many of you want to 
see Sri Sri Radha Swami Sundar, face to face. Anybody ready? Since the Supreme Lord is absolute, the form within the heart of a devotee, the form in the temple and the original form in Vaikuntha, Vrindavan Dham are all the same. They are non-different from one another. So that's why this process is, requires um, to be guided by the pure devotee of the Lord. Um, further, we'll see um, what Dromara is seeing. Yani vritti stanu vritam tavapada patma dhyanat bhavat janat tapa sravanena vasya sa brahmani swa mahimani api nata mabhut kim tu anta kasi lulitat patatam vimanat. 4910, earlier 492. My Lord, the transcendental bliss derived from meditating upon your lotus feet or hearing about your glories from pure devotees is so unlimited that it is far beyond the stage of Brahmananda, as we just talked about trillions times. And here, same thing is mentioned. How we'll get? By pure devotees. Wherein one thinks himself merged in an impersonal Brahman as one with the Supreme. Since Brahmananda is also defeated by the transcendental bliss derived from devotion service, then what to speak of the temporary blissfulness of elevating oneself to the heavenly planet, which is ended by separating sword of time. Although one may be elevated to the heavenly planet, he fall down to in due course of time. So we can see that how Dromara is by following Narada Muni's pure devotee of the Lord, is able to come to this platform. Further, the Tena Smaranti Atitaram Priyam Isha Martyam Yecha Anu Ada Sutas Grahavitta Dara Yetu Abjanaba Bavadiya Padara Vinda Saugandya Lubda Hrada Yeshi Krita Pasanga. O Lord, who have a lotus navel, if a person happens to associate with the devotee whose heart always hankers after your lotus feet. See that point. If a person happens to associate with the devotee, whom we should associate? Rupa Goswami is also one. Sajati as Nigde, Sadhu Yange, Satovrati. One who is advanced, one who is completely attached to the serving the lotus feet of the spiritual master. There is no other deviations, adulteration. Only desire is to please Sri Prabhupada and spiritual previous Acharyas. Acharya Nishta, Guru Nishta, Sampradaya Nishta. This is what we need to have. If there is no Nishta of Sampradaya, there is no Nishta of the institution, if there is no Nishta of Sri Prabhupada and spiritual master, you can't progress. Your progress is right away checked. So this is a very important point. With the devotee who's not always hankers after your lotus feet, seeking always their fragrance, he is never attached to the material body or in a bodily relationship to offspring, friends, home, wealth, wife, which are very, very dear to materialistic persons. Indeed, he does not care for them. And the purport, important purport. Here, Dhruva Maharaj plainly says that a devotee has no more bodily interest. We have to clearly understand this point. Otherwise, there may be confusions. He knows that he is not the body. Therefore, from the very beginning, without wasting time in bodily exercises. So, spiritual master is never told, go and do exercise hours and hours in gyms or whatever. There is limited time. If you want to do, you propose went for walking. You do half an hour, max, because unless you are, because this is not our goal. So, let us not waste time in these things. A devotee is, even if you do, put here, here a lecture or chant. Not simply do the gym for body, then who's going to purify your soul? So a devotee searches out a pure devotee and simply by his association becomes more advanced in spiritual consciousness than any yogi. Because a devotee knows that he is not the body, he is never affected by bodily happiness or distress. He is not interested in bodily relationship with wife, children, home, bank balance, etc. Or in the distress and happiness which come from those things. This is the special advantage of being a devotee. This status of life is possible only when a person is interested in associating with pure devotee who always enjoys the fragrance of the lotus feet of the Lord. Yeah, that's why it's very important to have the Acharya Nishta, Guru Nishta, Sampradaya Nishta, Institution Nishta, then only. But here we have to understand there, is no, there shouldn't be any confusion. If you see, this is Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj is saying this. But did he marry? Yes. Did he have? Did he enjoy kingdom? Yes. But with what view? Shastra Chakshu. Guru's desires. He's pleasing Narada Muni. He has in his heart. But he's just following the orders. He became a king. He ruled it. And then he went to Dhruva planet. 
बिकॉज इज सेंटर पॉइंट इज कृष्णा ही हैज फैमिली ही हैज किड्स एवरीथिंग बट इज नॉट अटैच्ड टू लाइक महाराज प्रिय होता ऑल्सो एंड अदर्स एज लॉन्ग एज वी आर गाइडेड बाय द प्योर डिवोटी ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर देन वी आर अंडर द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटी टेकिंग गाइडेंस प्रॉपर गाइडेंस देन विल बी ऑल राइट बिकॉज लॉर्ड कृष्णा विल बी इन द सेंटर सो विल नॉट बी unrestricted attachment is not there rather it's a it becomes a regulated attachment and there will be a spiritual bliss where you can feel the uh, bleakness or the very teeny happiness what we are feeling from the material things we think that is the greatest but once we start getting into the process of this bhakti then we can feel we can just give up automatically without any second thoughts unwanted things which we think it is the real thing but that is not the thing so that that is the instruction from dro maras we are seeing clearly how important these two associate with devotees mm, the same thing and now we will go to the now the, the this verse exact verse point is talked about by lord shiva is is prayam is vaishnavana vatasam let's hear from lord lord shiva this is the uh, rudra jwara geeta it is called in shrimad bhagavatam there are almost Ten or about ten Gitas, Brahma Gita, Brahm, uh, Gopi Gita, like that. There are so many Gitas songs uh, in certain mood, uh, certain mellow. See here, this is uh, Rudra Lord Shiva. You uh, release this weapon of Shiva Jwara, and then it couldn't control like an Arayan Jwara. Lord Krishna is fighting with Banasu. This is happening, and then he is now he is able to not control. He is affected by Arayan Jwara. Then he. Yeah, then he understood the power of lord narayan then he is offering his prayers there he himself is mentioning the important point which is very much connected uh, in today's verse exact point is been mentioned uh, and we will see from krishna book also exactly how it is been uh, mentioned uh, let let me take a look this is 1063 uh, yeah 1063 42 exact point जस्टोज so that is what today's verse also we are basically thinking that in it oh why should i wake up why should i chant why should i follow all these four regulated principles what need is there i am nicely enjoying my life what need is there uh, so that here vaishnavana vetas on the top most devotee of the lord he is speaking himself so his point instead of consuming The person described above is pitiable because he rejects that which is actually dear. The Lord accepts that which is not dear, not dear, and is ungodly, temporary sense that which is leading to suffering and bewilderment. And uh, so we have to go before this because there is a uh, few verses before, as it's important. There is a result of this also has been mentioned. One who hears this specific prayers. Coming from Lord Shiva's you know, is very very um, enlightening, very very beneficial. Sri Rudra Vaja, from the Brahma Param Jyoti, the Gudam Brahma Ni Van Manye, Yam Pasyanti Amalatmana Atvasam Iva Kevalam. Sri Rudra said, "You alone are the absolute true supreme light, the mystery hidden within the verbal manifestation of the absolute. Those whose hearts are spotless can see you, for you are uncontaminated like the sky." उडिया while i am your ego the ocean is your abdomen indra is your arm lord brahma your intelligence the progenitor of mankind your genitals religion is your heart you are indeed the original purusha creator of the worlds tatva avataro i am 
अकुंट दामन धर्मस्य गुप्ता जगतो हिताय वयम च सर्वे भवता अनुभविता विभाव आत्मो भवनानि सप्त योर करंट डिसेंट इनटू द मटेरियल टेल ओल ऑन ऑफ अनरिस्ट्रिक्टेड पावर इज मेंट फॉर अपहोल्डिंग प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ जस्टिस एंड बिबिटिंग द बिबिटिंग एंटायर यूनिवर्स वी डीमी गॉड्स इज डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर ग्रेस एंड अथॉरिटी डेवलप सेवन प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स तम एक आद्यो पुरुषम पुरुषो अद्वितीय तुर्या स्वधि देतुर हेतुर ईश प्रत्यासे अतापि यथा विकारम स्वमायया सर्वगुण परिषिद्धयै यू आर द ओरिजिनल पर्सन वन विदाउट अ सेकंड ट्रांसेंडेंटल सेल्फ मैनिफेस्टिंग अन अनकॉल्ड यू आर द कॉज ऑफ ऑल यू आर द अनलिमिटेड अनलिमिटेड कंट्रोलर यू आर द नॉनलेस परसीव्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशंस अ मैटर अफेक्टेड बाय योर इल्यूजन एनर्जी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशंस यू सैंक्शन सो दैट द वेरियस मटेरियल क्वालिटीज कैन फुल्ली मैनिफेस्ट what is seeing is praying to the lord is seeing and is praying one by one. Oh, all, almighty one just as the sun though hidden by a cloud illuminate the cloud and all other visible forms as well so you although hidden by material qualities remain self luminous thus reveals all those qualities along with the living entities who possess them yan maya mohit diya putra dara graha dishu un majjant nimajjanti prasakta vrijina arnave the air intelligence bewildered by your maya fully attached to children why one home so on person immersed in ocean of material misery sometimes rise to the surface and sometimes sink down so yeah this is what it is so devadattam imam laddha nirlokam ajitendriya yo na adri eta tat pado sa sochyo hi atma vanchaka one who has attained the human form of life a gift from god yet who fails to control his senses and honor your feet he should surely to be pitied for he is only cheating himself lord shiva here condemns those who refuse to engage in devotion service of the supreme lord so that's why we have to follow in the footsteps he is a chetrapal is a protector we pray for his mercy we offer mahaprasad every day at home or at temple so so by his mercy we can at least get some taste for chanting the holy name and hearing and engaging in the service we can understand the desires of guru यस्तम विस्रजते मर्त आत्मा प्रियमीश्वरम विपर्य इंद्रियाम विषम अति अमृत त्यज अहम ब्रह्म अथ विबुदा मुनयश्च अमलाशया सर्वात्म प्रपन्न स्वाम आत्म प्रेस्तमीश्वर ई लॉट ब्रह्म अदर डेमिंग लॉट द प्यूर् मैंडेड सेल सरेंडर्ड होल हार्टेडली ऑन टू यू अवर डियर मोस् सेफ अंड लॉड इन दिस वे वी कैन सी रुद्र गीत रुद्र ज्वर गीत In 63 chapter in Krishna book also, let's see what Prabhu is saying. My Lord, you are actually the dear most super soul of all living entities and supreme controller of everything. The human being who is always illusion is afraid of ultimate death. A man who is simply attached to sensual enjoyment voluntarily accepts the miserable material existence and thus wanders after the will of the wish for sense pleasure. He is certainly the most foolish man, for he drinks poison and puts aside the nectar. My dear Lord. all the divine gods including myself and lord brahma as well as great saintly person and sages who have cleansed their hearts of material attachment have by your grace whole heartedly taken shelter of your lotus feet we have all taken shelter of you because we have accepted you as the supreme lord and the dear most life and soul of all of us you are the original cause of cosmic manifestation you are its supreme maintainer you are the cause of dissolution also you are equal to every one the most peaceful supreme friend of every living and you are the supreme worshipful object For every one of us, my dear Lord, let us always be engaged in your transcendental loving service, so that we may get free from the material entanglement. Mm. And so, so now we can understand how important it is to uh, hear. And then, same thing, Mark Kande Muni is also saying, "Tasma kaveha Bhagavan nata tava kana suklam tanu swadhitam kushala bhajanti ya satvata purusha rupam usanti zatam loko yata abayam uttama sukham na chanya." This is twelve eight forty six. Oh Lord, become because fearlessness, spiritual happiness, and the kingdom of God are all achieved through the mode of pure goodness. Your devotees consider this mode, but never passion and ignorance to be direct manifestation of you. The supreme person, I have got an intelligent person, thus worship your beloved transcendental form, composed of pure goodness, along with the spiritual forms of your pure devotees. So that's always we have to worship Lord and His pure devotees. then we can actually really understand his mercy then he has been now barkande muni talked about the form of the lord let's see what chetra mahaprabhu is describing about this form 
ब्यूटिफुल डिस्क्रिप्शन आर देयर नवांबद लसत जुते नवतदीन मनो मनोघा अंबर सुचित्र मुरली स्फुरत श्रद्ध आनंद चंद्रानन मयूर दल दूषित सुभगत पार हार प्रभा समी मदन मोहन शक्ति तो सतनोति नेत्र स्पहा माय डियर फ्रेंड द लास्ट ऑफ कृष्णा बॉडी इज मोर ब्रिलियंट देन द न्यूली फॉर्मड क्लाउड एंड इज येलो दस इज मोर अट्रैक्टिव देन न्यूली अराइव्ड लाइटनिंग ए पीकॉक फेदर डेकोरेट्स हिज हेड ऑन हिज नेक hangs a lovely necklace of brilliant pearls as he holds his charming flute to his lips his face looks as beautiful as a full autumn moon by such beauty mother mohan the enchanter of cupid is increasing the desire of my eyes my eyes to see him kwa nanda kula chandrama kwa siki chandra kalankriti kwa mandra murali rava kwa nu sure surendra neela dyuti kwa rasa rasa pandavi kwa saki jeevar rakshau sadir nidir mama suhrut tama kwa bata hanta ha dik vidim this is 1935 antalila my dear friend where is krishna who is like the moon rising from vosna maharaj nanda dynasty where is krishna you are decorated with a peacock feather where is he where is krishna whose blood produces such a deep sound oh where is krishna whose bodily lustre is like the lustre of blue nindra neela jam where is krishna who is so expert in rasa dancing oh where is he who you can save my life kindly tell me where to find krishna the treasure of my life and the best of my friend feeling separation from him i thereby condemn providence the shape and shape of my destiny ब्रजेन्द्र कुल दुग्ध सिंधु कृष्ण ताहे पूर्ण इंदु जन्मी कैल जगत पुतोर कांति अमृत यवे पिए निरंतर प्रिय जिए व्रज जनेर नयन चकोर द फैमिली ऑफ महाराज नंद इज जस्ट लाइक ओशन ऑफ मिल्क वेयर इन लॉर्ड कृष्ण एज अ राइज ऑन लाइक द फुल मून टू इल्यूमिनेट द एंटायर यूनिवर्स द आइज ऑफ रेजिडेंट्स ऑफ वज्र व्रज आर लाइक चकोर बर्ड दैट कंटीन्यूअसली ड्रिंक द नेक्टर ऑफ हिज बॉडीली लस्टर एंड दस लीव पीसफुली सके ही कोता कृष्ण कराह दर्शन क्षणे के यहाँ मुख ना देखिले पाठे बुका शीघ्र देखा ना रहे जीवन माय डियर फ्रेंड वेर इज कृष्ण फ्रेंडली लेट मी सी हिम माय हार्ट ब्रेक्स एट नॉट सीइंग ए स्पेस इवन फॉर ए मोमेंट फ्रेंडली शो हिम टू मी इमीडिएटली अदरवाइज आई कैन नॉट लिव चित महाप्रभु इन सेपरेशन ये व्रजेर रमणी कामार्क तप्त कुमदिनी निज करामृत दिय धाना प्रफुल्लित करे ये काहा मोर चंद्र से देखा हसकी राख मोर प्राण दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट लाइक चैतन्य महाप्रभु सिक्स लास्ट वन लास्ट टू वर्सेस द वुमेन ऑफ वृंदावन आर जस्ट लाइक लिली इज ग्रोइंग हॉट इन द सन ऑफ लस्ट इट इज बट मून लाइक कृष्णा मेक्स देम ऑल जुबिलेंट बाय बेस्टोइंग अपॉन द नेक्टर ऑफ हिज हैंड्स ओ माय डियर फ्रेंड वेयर इज माय मून नाउ सेव माय लाइफ बाय शोइंग हिम टू मी काहा से छोड़ाम इथा ताहा मा सिकी कुचेर उदान नव मेगे येर इंद्र धनु पीतामर तदिद्युति मुखमाला बक पंति नवांबद जीनी श्याम तनु माय डियर फ्रेंड वेयर इज दिस ब्यूटीफुल हेलमेट विद अ पीकॉक फेदर अपॉन इट लाइक अ रेनबो अपॉन अ न्यू क्लाउड वेयर आर दोस येलो गारमेंट शाइनिंग लाइक लाइटनिंग वेयर इज दैट नेकलेस ऑफ पर्ल्स दैट रिसेंबल फ्लॉक्स ऑफ हेरोइंग फ्लाइंग इन द स्काई द ब्लैकिश बॉडी ऑफ कृष्णा ट्रायम्फ्स ओवर द न्यू ब्लैकिश रेन क्लाउड the person size even one capture the beautiful body of krishna it remains always prominent within his heart krishna's body resembles the sap of a mango tree for it when it enters the minds of women it will not come out despite great and ever thus krishna's extraordinary beauty is like a thorn of seya berry tree ek bar yaar nayan lage sada tar hrade jage krishna tanu yer amrita aata nari mane paisa hai ki etne nahi बाहिराय तनु नहे से ये कुलेर कांता 1940 अंतलेला चेतन चरतामृत सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दिस सो ब्यूटीफुल डिस्क्रिप्शन हैज बीन गिवन अबाउट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सो दैट्स वी वन मस्ट वर्शिप वन मस्ट हियर एंड वन मस्ट सी द लॉर्ड इन दैट मूड अदरवाइज इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गिव अप वी कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस अल्टीमेट हैप्पीनेस ऑफ द Uh, attaining ultimate happiness sukham atyantikam atindriya grahyam it cannot be understood by blind material senses so now let's look at the the verses we read but we haven't gone through the uh, the purports of that one minute one minute let me look at <clears throat> chaitanya mahaprabhu so rupa goswam this is a vishna chakra takur describing it one um, minute What the Rudra Jara Gita, so that we can understand the 
Ja. 36. 36. Yes. Ja. Yeah. In these verses, Lord Shiva explains that uh, 1, 3, this is, uh, no, 10, 63, 36. In these verses, Lord Shiva explains, you are directly the Supreme Absolute, while in this world, including myself and everything else is your expansion. Lord Shiva said, your navel is the sky, earth is your food and sun is your eyes. I, Shiva, I am your ego. Indra is your arms and herbs are your bodily hairs. Brahma is your intellect. Rajava Daksha is your genital and religion is your heart. Uh, the reputation of the word Isya is to make clear that they all belong to Krishna. All these visual manifestations are opulent expansions, vibhutis of you, whose body is eternal, fully conscious and perfectly blissful. You create the worlds in the sense that you create the material elements like fire from your own transcendental navel, face and other bodily parts. Verse number 37. Lord Shiva said, Though you are not visible because you are directly the supreme absolute truth, still you become visible to the people of the material world due to supreme mercy arising from your inconceivable energy. This is the intent of this verse. Shiva continued, Though you are the supreme Brahman, you repeat yourself, uh, reveal yourself to us because it is impossible to grasp your powers by logical arguments. Akunta Daman Kunti Kartum. You appear in this world to protect Dharma in the form of devotion to you. Destroy. Destroy opposing philosophies and to liberate even such materialists as the karmis, gnanis, and sinners. You appear not just for ordinary persons of this universe. This is being done by the ten rulers of the directions, Vayam, who are authorized by you to protect the seven worlds. So what need is there for you to appear in this world for this purpose? Mm. Uh, further, Krishna replied, since you are all my expansion, then you are not different from me. In this world, Lord Shiva answered, no, no. You are one devoid of distinctions of similarity. Since there is no other supreme controller than you, even among the incarnations of Matsya and others who are identical with you, you are the origin. Although appearing in a human-like form, though you are different from the Jiva Shakti and Maya Shakti, you are also without difference. Since everything comes from you, there are four chief forms of Godhead, Chaturvyuha, arising from your Surupa. Among these four, you are the fourth member of the quadruple expansion, Turiya, known as Vasudeva. Krishna said, but no one is capable of seeing me, Shiva, Shiva replied. You are visible only to yourself, Swadruk, because you are the greatest of all. You are the cause, Hetu, of everything and yet you are without cause. Therefore, you are the supreme controller, Isha. Since all the chief powers are yours, though you are full of such powers, <coughs> still you assist the insignificant material modes as follows. <coughs> According to the transformations within every material body, you manifest yourself by the agency of your maya for the successful functioning of the intelligence, mind and senses. Sarva guna prasiddhai. Prasiddhai. <coughs> you are perceived as a super soul in all things. If you do not accept the role of super soul within all of them, then there could be no manifestation of material modes and thus they would be without any purpose. Now verse number 39. Look at the 39. What does it say? An example is given to show how the Lord is uh, invisible as Paramatma. He is revealed through the qualities of Maya, Shiva said. From the observer's point of view, the sun appears to be covered by the cloud. Yet, it is sun that allows us to see the clouds and all other things as well. Though the observing living entity is covered by the false ego, which is produced by you as super soul, you reveal the intelligence, senses and sense objects as well as the living entity. Verse number 40. Shiva said, being merciful, he appeared in this world to deliver living entities. The living entities, however, remain submerged in the ocean of material existence. Nimajjanti, the word used. But the other one is also there. But Marjana, that is Mandira Marjana, this is Nimajjanti. This is merged in material existence. The other one is Chiyato Darpana Marjana. One must engage in the service of the Lord. Then our dirt in the heart can be removed. Further, let's look at 41. In this verse, Shiva condemns those who do not worship Krishna, having attained a human body given by you, the living and he absorbs himself in the sense pleasure and disrespects your lotus feet. Now the 42, I will stop in a few minutes. Shiva said, he is most pitiable who rejects you for the sake of sense objects such as children which are just the opposites. Uh, <clears throat> Who rejects, uh, who rejects you for the sake of sense objects that, uh, such as children which are just the opposites. Not spiritual, not dear, and ungodly. Uh, Krishna asked, I have forgive, forgiven whatever you did. So now what do you and the demigods accompanying you intend to do? This is in Banasur fighting. Lord Krishna is asking. Let's see Lord, what Lord Shiva. Vishwanath Chakravarti's comment. 
by describing krishna as the super soul the dear most supreme lord shiva informs krishna that my fighting against you for the sake of banasur who is not the super soul not dear and not the supreme controller means that i myself have rejected nectar and taken poison lord shiva is teaching a lesson through this past time that we are how we should be alert how we should be alert and always be mindful understanding the desire also not bringing a guru to our level and not to disturb the mood of guru at least don't do anything fine be quiet but don't disturb the mood of guru don't try because he has a plan to execute sir propas mission and you try to bring always this problem that problem and without you solving cooperating with others and you are always bringing it to guru to solve this is not a good proposal this is not a good thing that means you, you are not understanding the mood and desires of rich master we have to do first endeavor and cooperate and work together and serve and so that's why the here the lord shiva is mentioning this i myself have rejected nectar and taken poison thus in this previous verse it was myself whom i was condemning myself and then further in the 44th verse let's see what lord krishna says in this verse shiva prays for krishna bhakti oh krishna birth out of birth i worship you alone to attain highest liberation bhava apavarga a pure love of god it characterized by unalloyed devotion service unto you which is described in the fifth canto the imperative case is used to express supplication with this intention shiva gives a description of krishna because of your supreme position uh, you are the cause of creation maintenance and destruction of you know whereas others are not supreme you are perfectly objective and balanced whereas other living beings have an incomplete grasp of reality cannot be perfectly objective you are peaceful whereas all others are not you are the friend and welfare of whereas others are not benefactors you are the supreme soul whereas others are not paramatma therefore not bullied you are unique whereas all others are not unique but you are attached to your devotees as you have stated sadava hrudayam mahim sadhu naam hrudayam toham the pure devotee is always within the core of my heart and i am always in the heart of my devotee you are one whereas others are many you are the shelter <coughs> you can understand the last one will read and then will stop <coughs> shri krishna said oh shiva i am pleased with you please choose a bone shiva replied oh lord i cannot give up my attachment for my sinful follower banasur what can i do please be merciful to him that is the benediction i chose shiva replied then he speaks this verse make banasur fearless krishna why shiva is saying there is actually no good reason for you for your favoring him it is all just your mercy <coughs> krishna what type of mercy should i give shiva the same mercy that you gave to prala the chief of <coughs> demons wow see that's why through pure devotees uh, only you can obtain whatever devotee ask for the lord can give but not to anybody and everybody that's why we have to be in the association of pure devotees under the shelter of guru and krishna guru and shripad and previous acharyas in this way we can see that how lord uh, being blessing this uh, the lord krishna is blessing lord shiva uh, so we'll stop here let me stop let's see if you have any questions corrections comments already 8 o'clock i don't want to go over time hari krishna anyone has any questions comments corrections reflections please go ahead maybe uh, they are not unmuted maybe so mr pro let me see hold on there is some word i think it is open re krishna re krishna yeah everybody anybody can unmute no one has any questions comments you all understood the essence one must have shastri shabda then one must have greed for service greed for worshiping the lord greed to and always third one is to always in the association of pure devotees and one must fourth one is scrutinizingly reading it uh, so and hearing it proper first point we talked about hearing it uh, sufficiently and properly hearing it that means we have to hear regularly and then after hearing at least we should make one point or two point or all the points in the class then do something with it that means we have to apply it if you note down then you can apply it if you just move on then you can't apply it 
If there is a planning, then there is execution. If there is no planning, you can't execute it. So that's why that's what uh, proper means. Sufficiently hearing, sufficiently and properly. So attentively and then applying it. So that's what Sravana Dasyas, Varana Dasyas, Marana Dasyas, Sampati Dasyas, Samadhi Dasyas. This is what that Sravana leads to Samadhi. Provided we follow Prabhupada's direction. Sravana becomes Varana means fixed, completely absorbed. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always in that absorption in his discussions and his hearing. That's why he's always looking, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? As we just heard the verses. Thank you all for listening. Any questions, comments, you can post or you can unmute and say so. Hare Krishna Bhuji, Dhanasanam, Alpha Sri Prabhupada. Yeah, Malpana. nice, uh, nice uh, class for you. So, I just uh, want to ask uh, one thing. <clears throat> so, when we chant, um, yes. we've been told that uh, you no, know, we uh, we we hear right when you yes. do japa. Yes. Um, we just hear right. Uh, whatever we are saying uh, loud, yes. we we have to just just hear. So. Yes. My question is, I mean, um, is there a role for the mind uh, when we are doing chanting, when we are doing a japa? Because if we want to really, really hear, that means we, our mind cannot be engaged to even even to imagine and write yeah, a form and all those things, right? So as, as long as we are engaging mind, that means we are actually not listening. We, we listening is gone and now we are doing something else so yeah. my question is yeah is it just listening means listening uh, without even uh, worrying about uh, whether we are seeing a form or imagining right, right. all sorts of things good question good question <clears throat> Prabhupada talks about it in uh, i think uh, canto one chapter three verse number 43 maybe in the purport i think last verse 44 or 43 one cannot be pure in his thoughts, unless he is pure in mind. One cannot be pure in mind unless his actions are pure. One cannot be pure in his actions unless he is eating, sleeping, mating, defending are pure. So that is the first point we have to understand. That means we have to some work to do. So that's why we have for Japa, there is <coughs> Japa affirmations, which means we pray to Guru and Prabhupada and we, we chant six Ashtakam prayers. We chant the Samsara Dava prayers, and then uh, the other ones, the chanting, <coughs> the 10 offenses. Then we meditate, we hear attentively, and then we pray, and then we start chanting, and we should hear what we are chanting. We, can, we shouldn't hear Prabhupada, we shouldn't hear anybody else. Voice. Even when we are on the Japa calls, you should mute yourself, you should hear only your voice. Your mind is going somewhere, if you are sleepy, you should get up and chant, and do something with it. If mind is going somewhere, then you can <coughs> look at Tulsi Marani or <coughs> look at picture. <coughs> and then again, you sit down and, and chant <coughs> attentively. What we are chanting is supposed to what we are supposed to hear. Exactly, the crystal clear each and every syllable of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, all the 16 syllables has to be heard attentively and clearly pronouncing it <laughs> without uh, eating the words of the syllables. So that's why sometimes we have to record. Whether we are able to chant the full name or we are biting the words or uh, we are going too slow. And the ideally, it should be around seven minutes. If somebody is chanting nine minutes, ten minutes, above eight minutes, then something is wrong. Which means mind is going somewhere. <coughs> ideally, seven minutes in the beginning. After some practice, it will be around six minutes. After long practice, it will come to five and a half minutes or around five minutes. But that, that requires a lot of practice though. Then only. If somebody is chanting five five minutes in the beginning, that means there could be something wrong. So you should record yourself and see whether you are able to chant clearly or are you missing something. So that way we can detect whether mind is going somewhere or whether we are chanting properly or not. That is one way. So mind, if whenever the mind is distracted, mind definitely will pull the thought, but we shouldn't be agitated with it. That is mind's job, sankalpa, vikalpa. And that's where the planning should be there also. Day before, eating should be a little bit less or early eating. 
and then uh, mind we should do anything we are supposed to do taking care of children or whatever planning things office things meetings those should be handled <coughs> in a way that it doesn't bring those consciousness or those thoughts into the mind <coughs> because that is bound to happen if you are taken care <coughs> you will not worry so much mind will not bring those thoughts but if you haven't have a proper planning then definitely for sure it's going to bring those thoughts so that's why before you sleep itself we chant guru and propa pranam mantra and then you can chant you know narsing dev mantra whatever your rest of the lord nityan prabhu small no you pray to him rupa goswami acharyas then so that you get up in proper time and you chant with the proper mood and proper consciousness your mind is not disturbed by this sincere and as soon as you get up also you do the same thing by praying to guru propa and previous acharyas then our mood can be right without prayers it's very difficult very difficult to do proper service proper chanting proper hearing is not possible even proper lectures also you can give a proper lecture when we are depending on our own strength you can give you can give you have to depend on the previous acharyas only when you sincerely seeking the mercy you have to first before even you prepare for a class first you have to pray it is not our business to do first things and then you surrender to guru that is not what pralad maharaj is teaching clearly yeah in the 7 point i think 5.22 that shravanam kirtanam smaranam vandanam pal sevanam archanam vandanam dasam sakyam atmavedanam the second verse iti pumsarpita vishnu bhagavat chet navalakshana bhagavati adha directly there in the commentary you can see that it must be direct first one must offer one must submit otherwise what material or spiritual qualification we have to we have to chant to our what qualification we have to speak what qualification to have we have to do anything in bhakti no no qualification we don't have bhakti adhikar all we have adhikar is for karma or gnana we don't have adhikar for bhakti bhakti adhikar has to be obtained from guru and previous acharya then we can understand otherwise the verse may say just simple things you can't understand what this verse is talking about when you offer your prayers and sincerely submitting that's what your prophet used to do all the time before coming to us itself he was praying to advaita acharya nityan prabhu rupa goswami since crying like anything then he could otherwise he, how many times prophet met his spiritual master we think there is this sometimes this question arises oh prabhu i haven't met my spiritual i am not with him but that is not the, even if you are 100 times with him it is not going to result unless you are in the right consciousness you are in the prayers you are absorbed in that mood prophet was only six or 10 times max less than i think six times or five times only met his spiritual master but then how did he understand one line or two line he is gave instruction to preach to the whole world western world how did he understand only by the previous acharya's mercy he was praying reveal me what it is how i can execute how can i establish how can i preach how can i set up this institution then only he, they will reveal they will reveal when they reveal lord krishna will reveal because first we have to be you have to receive the mercy from his representative then krishna will be merciful and then he will give his mercy otherwise he will not give mercy so that's why when we chant also we need lot of mercy we need lot of prayers before night sleeping when you wake up otherwise we won't be able to chant, even wake up even despite putting alarm also we will be sleeping because we need we can't depend on our strength for any of the bhakti process we have to depend on the strength of guru and previous acharyas hmm? hopefully one day we'll start crying for <clears throat> them right now tears are not flowing we can we pray but really tears and that means that nishta is not there mm-hmm. fix it up that uh, um, that whatever you know kinkara ainanda tanuja kinkaram patitam maam vishame bhavam puru kripaya tapa pada pankasthit duli sadrusam that is not there that's why nayanam galata sudara doesn't happen there is no crying there is not a single tear comes out because that that's not in our absorption so in order to, for that we have to really work on it keep praying maybe after few days few months few years hopefully we will get some tears we will really cry then our chanting will perfect but don't worry about the mind going that is bound to happen for sure for you know it takes lot of practice uh, but you look at tulsi marani or you you can uh, look at the deity's picture or you can read or hear for 5 minutes or 2 minutes but best way is generally you do the samsara dava you some shikshastra it takes few minutes and you watch the mangala arati either you are in live at our temple or you can watch mayapur or vrindavan always there you watch for a few minutes take the darshan and then you can start chanting so that our consciousness is first absorbed 
by this because this is transcendental sound. Then when we chant, then at least we have some fixed consciousness in the mind. But still it may go, but at least we should uh, sincerely pray to Tulsi Maharani, sincerely pray to Guru, and then again we sit down and then start chanting. Uh, but not um, artificially thinking of this or that, uh, but sincerely just only here. That is what we are supposed to do, here only. <clears throat> but at least we should feel that these beads are the lotus feet of the Lord. We should pull slowly down towards us as you are massaging the lotus feet of Lord. In that meditative mood, we should chant. So that way, we personally feel the Lord is there and are personally doing service. Because you know, see, chanting is for service. We are asking the service. Please engage me in your service. And we are, this is also service. Chanting is also service to please Guru and Krishna. Because Guru has given the orders. Prabhupada has given 16 rounds of chanting. We should do, ideally. Yes, in the beginning, okay. Start with one round, two rounds. Gradually increase. And increase that you try to do quality rounds. Whatever you are doing. And gradually increase it. Because that is what Acharya has given. So that's it before initiation. Also, there is a prascharya process. Six months to a year. Prabhupada hardly gave... A, one or two or few um, directly in a month or few weeks uh, initiation, but most of the time, minimum six months. Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami themselves follow this process of prosteria, six months to a year waiting before you initiate. Because so that we know whether we are able to chant, whether we are able to follow for regular principles, whether we have dedication to the lotus feet of Guru or not. Uh, otherwise, we just simply take and then after the collapse. Um, we don't understand what sincerity and what's supposed to be done, how to hear from Guru, how to follow Guru's instruction. That won't be there which is not a good practice to do. Is that clear, Sudhakar Prabhu? Uh, kind of, Prabhuji. So I think, you know, based on what you said, um, when we do Japa, we, we hear the transcendental sound. Yes. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we don't want to engage the mind in going different, different things. That is anyway, you know, that's bad. Correct. Correct. But, but, but even engaging mind, let's say, to imagine something, Right. Yeah. Even let's say, you know, you, you are trying to imagine a, a form of the Lord or right uh, through the mind. Is, is that needed or without even worrying about engaging mind, you just simply hear and then you no, know, not worrying about whether you are you know, uh, feeling or seeing the Lord or that's all may happen or may not happen. But that is not really the thing, really. What needs to be focused is just hearing, right? That's that's it. And not, not other things yeah. are not in your control. Only thing in in our control is just hear. That's it. And, right. and no 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 role for mind to play while we are doing japa. That, so that, that's what is that is, the right yes. thinking. Yeah, we are supposed to hear only. But in case in the beginning, for some maybe because uh, that's the nature of what they are carrying from this life or past life. For some, it could be overwhelming. A lot of thoughts keep coming. It doesn't go away. For them, it's all right. At least they can at least meditate on the Lord's form, um, you know, either massaging or the, you know, washing their lotus feet and offering tulsi leaves, offering various flowers, fragrant flowers, just like the Brahmana offering, you know, even a kheer and then his hands, but obviously he's elevated devotee, he could do that. They're not, but at least if the mind is going here and there, the, but that's not a good practice. This is only when it is really, despite trying these various simple things, Still, mind is keep going here and there. Then you may want to meditate uh, on that form. Look at the picture, Panchatattva or Chetra Mahaprabhu or Nityan Prabhu's picture or Radha Samsundar picture or Tulsi Marani picture. And uh, look at that, absorb it, and then you can meditate and then you can chant. We do that before worshipping the deity. Anybody who's going on the altar, they must, they must chant first Gayatri, Brahma Gayatri. Anybody who is doing service of cooking or the dressing, they must meditate. They must meditate. For 16 Upachar, even further, they, this thing is there. You are supposed to meditate, do the Gayatri, full Gayatri. You are supposed to offer various items to Guru, Prabhupada, and uh, Chetra Mahaprabhu, and the Radha Krishna, various items. All these four or five personalities we are supposed to. This is meditation. Because before you even bathe the Lord, you are supposed to do so that your mind is fully absorbed. Because you made it already, mind is fully focused. Now you can worship. Most of the times you may jump directly and I will, I will do it. I want to you know, finish it. But that is not the process given. That's why then we can't do attentive things in our dressing or in our services. Because that process we are not following. 
we are following what we like to do. But that is not the way devotion service is bhakti. Bhakti is always, you have to go with Shastra, Sadhu and Guru. When you do your own things, it is not bhakti. You get the result, but it is not called bhakti. You can't attain pure bhakti like that. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I think we had we have meeting at, at eight. So let's uh, stop. I think anyone has questions, further questions or comments? I, you know, I have one question, me. Prabhuji. Okay, quickly go ahead. Raju. Yeah, go ahead. I was saying that suppose uh, you are doing chanting and for uh, like something happened, it, you had to break. So like, uh, so you have to restart from the beginning or you can start from where you left? Yeah, so good question. This happens for uh, even... Not only beginners, senior, senior devotees also it can happen because your guru might be calling or your authority might be calling uh, for service or whatever. It could be the that thing. So then uh, you stop, you know, you ask, please forgive me, Lord, I have to take this, so I'll continue. You're on that beat and then you take the call, you finish it quickly and then go back and finish your round. That's the ideal way. But in case you have to run and take care of things, it could be emergency or it could be whatever, the children's thing, whatever, uh, then uh, you can go back and uh, you know if your bead is there then you can continue otherwise you start from the beginning ideally we continue generally if it is not a detailed activity uh, you are not back in a few minutes uh, then uh, we'll have to begin with the round from the beginning because we don't know where we left off and it's too long uh, from the lord right and you started your lord you are feeding the lord you stopped in the middle ideally you don't go away for so long because you want to come back and feed your uh, whether it's parent or child or a, uh, or a lord. So in that same way, we can think in that way. It is personal. Ideally, we should be back soon. Uh, if it is not possible for whatever reason, it's okay. And we can start from beginning again. So, yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Let's see if anybody else. I think that's it. So we'll stop. I think we have a meeting. So supposed to have a book distribution meeting, I think. Okay, anyone else has questions, please, uh, we'll take offline through, um, yeah, you can send me a message or we can discuss in person. Thank you all very much. So tomorrow is Ekadasi fasting from grains and beans. March 30th is Ram Naomi. Please invite your friends and family. Thursday, it will be in the evening program. Uh, Kata and Kirtan. Uh, so details will be posted, but it will be mostly 6 30 or 7 to 9 or 9 30 program. And uh, yeah, and those are the quick announcements. Simeza Prabhu, go ahead. Hey, Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhu. A wonderful class, wonderful discussion. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we have a book distribution call. Um, See, so if there is nothing else, if there is no other comments or questions, we'll go for the uh, meeting. So thank you so much, the devotees, for joining today. So as Prabhuji mentioned, tomorrow is Ekadeshi. So become more conscious, more conscious of Krishna. So it's Upavas. Upavas means, you know, very close to the Lord. Upavas, sitting very close to Krishna, sitting very close to the Lord, that means we can take up the chanting, reading, hearing, many ways. So please engage and uh, tomorrow evening also there will be class. Uh, please join and also there will be curtain at the temple as well. So please join as much as you can. Um, yeah, so thank you so much and let's pay our obeisance to all the assembled Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Vancha Kalpataru Pashya Prabhasindu Bhavacha Padidanam Pavane Bhu, Vaishnavi Bhu Namo Namaha, Vaishnavanda Ki Jai, Kandira Srimad Bhagavad Ki Da Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananda Kodi Vaishnavanda Ki Jai, Guru Primanandi Hari Hari. I would also request devotees to stay for a book distribution plan for this weekend and coming weeks. Those who like, those who are able to stay, please stay on the call, stay on the line, and we'll start the the Sankirtan meeting. Hare Krishna. Hare Bhav. Hare Krishna Bhav. Sorry, I had to drop, but I'll uh, look at the notes and then I'll join. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, no problem. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.